Alright guys, today we have I Love You Colonel Sanders, which was recommended to me by Platts, so we'll give it a try. <laughs> and uh, apparently this is made by KFC, which is actually hilarious. Oh boy. It's like Shokugeki no Selma with Colonel Sanders. My god. <laughs> So am I playing as Colonel Sanders, or am I like a chick trying to get with Colonel Sanders slash dude? Uh, new game. Enter your name. And, uh, confirm. Oh, I actually get my name, that's awesome. <laughs> that's rare. Alright. Ah, oh, that nasty KFC chicken. KFC is my least favorite chicken place. <laughs> Bojangles is where it at. it's at. If you haven't been to North Carolina, Bojangles is the, is the spot. Did it freeze? Did I break it? Oh! That was a short playthrough. Goodness gracious. The nasty dry ass biscuits broke the game. There's too many of them on the screen. They clogged up my processor. <laughs> oh no. Colonel Sanders, why? I got through that sick anime opening and then the piss gets on the screen. <laughs> Kill my people. Oh, you sleep softly as morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of the, your modest student apartment. This is a modest student? This is an awesome student apartment. Look at that space chicken. That's pretty cool. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in this moment forever. <laughs> Or you can wake up down now now. Your first day of culinary school school is no time to sleep in. Smack that clock up and at him. Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you. At the pre prestigious University of Cooking School Acad Academy for Learning. This is definitely Shokugeki no Soma, 100%. <laughs> Copyright. Your mind begins to wander. Who will be there? What will you cook? What should you wear? Time begins to fly by, and you find your imagination getting away from you. Let's think about the future in Daydream. It's fin here finally, your first day of culinary school. So many dishes to prepare, so many students to meet. Your mind is swimming with possibilities when you realize you're running late. You grab a biscuit and burst out- Grab a biscuit, really. Burst out the door in a hurry. Mmm, delicious. Just what you needed to wake up those taste buds. A dry ass KFC biscuit, baby. That's just what I needed. Yikes, you're in such a hurry. In fact, that you forgot to put on de my, any deodorant before running out the door. You're sweating buckets as you arrive on time. Uh-oh. Oh, ruh oh, Raggy. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. She's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met, and you absolutely, absolutely love her for it. Good morning, Fluffy Panda. Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? Actually, I'm... Because I sure am. Excited, a little nervous, okay, okay, a lot of nervous. What's the... It's just that this morning I made breakfast for myself, but well, when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? <laughs> Damn, she's crazy. Classic Miriam. Raised by master chef parents, she has all. She's always held herself to a very high standard, apparently. Ever since we were little babies playing together and you rescued me from that quick sandbox, quick sandbox, it's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're going to do great. What kind of perilous childhood life did I live without I was in a quick sandbox? <laughs> but with University of Cooking School Academy for learning famous three-day only semesters, I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. A sweet girl, Miriam has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer, she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped a tooth on a practicing on a mannequin. What the fuck? Wait, back? Can I go back and read that? 
Should you pep talk her or change the subject to give her some relief? I'm a pep talker. We're best friends. Remember last month when we saw the fortune teller and you had and had our tarot cards read? The lady with the mask who gave me nightmares? I've been trying to forget. Oh, I know she looks spooky, but she was sweet. And she told you that you were destined for great things. Remember that card with the fancy looking tower and the other card featuring the handsome fellow in the red suit? <laughs> I've been waiting for so long to meet a handsome fellow I can call my own. And I'm sure you will soon. In no time, we'll be graduate. We will be graduating and you'll be delighting the world with your heartfelt cooking in no time at all. As you talk Miriam up, you can feel her nerves begin to ease. Good job, me. You know what? Maybe everything will be okay after all. And if not, at least I have these killer bangs. <laughs> I confused one of her eyebrows for a bang because it's in the center of her forehead. <laughs> Is that an eyebrow? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> yes, I can. can. Can you believe I cut them myself? You can definitely believe it. I uh, cannot believe it. <laughs> Before you can get out another word, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands onto the ground. Who dares? Hey. It's Ashley, your arch rival. She's totally evil. But you can't help but feel, be filled with jealousy. She get, can get anything she wants and she knows it. Jesus Christ, that's one busty lass. Hello, Ashley. Oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. You leave Fluffy Panda alone. There, shins alone. They are perfectly normal shins. Ah, uh, you cannot stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley, but she had to add extra letters to make herself feel better than everyone. If anyone here knows what perfect shins look like, it's us! We're not going to let you or your r really weird insults get to us. <laughs> Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van the Man Man, what the f has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight you can see him casually working out his glutes while he's styling his hair. No lie, they are rocking glutes. Uh -huh. Van Van? Oh my god. <laughs> Is he a JoJo character? You ring ring? You've never been sure what their arrangement is, but as long <laughs> as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just close as you and Miriam, but substantially more devious. What is that face she's making? I can't believe that University of Cookie School Academy for Learning would ever allow people like you to attend as students. I know, right? You think they just hand us our diplomas by now? Or maybe hire us in as professors. You amateurs can learn a lot from us. With the first day of school about to start, there's just no time to properly tell these two off. So you resist the urge. Let's go, Miriam. See you later, losers. As you approach, what is this goofy man? You see a goofy looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. Did he just fart at me? Hop. Fart noise. Oopsie. I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Uh, that should do the trick. What is this little grotesque child? I love you. I think you mean thank you. My name is Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. Does someone like this also be a student at this school? He must be one heck of a chef. Also, his name tag clearly says Bob, but I guess he's reading it upside down. He doesn't even know his own name. <laughs> Hi, Pop. I'm Fluffy Panda, so... Are you going to make me hold the store all day? Nope. And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Aww. Is it me, or is he just kind of cute? I think it's just you. You both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. You stand at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy chit-chatting. Oh, look at that Shichiba in you. I think that's what he is. 
Oh, he's a corgi. One of the two. I think he may be a corgi. He's a corgi. A scruffy-looking pooch takes his place at the podium and in the front of the class. Adorable. Now, now. Oh, I don't even know how to do a dog voice. Uh... I don't know. <laughs> now, now, quiet down, everyone. <laughs> I don't know. Who is this unreasonably cute pup, and why is he in our culinary class? He must be Spiracles, head instructor and CEO of US UCSAL. Please call me Professor Dog. He may be cute, little, and fluffy, but I still demand respect. Woof. <laughs> what? A cute dog is our professor? This is the best school ever! I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuances of fine dining. He's so adorable. <laughs> Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you as you, a swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom. I'm chilly. Someone close the window. And then, he walks in. Oh my god. <laughs> You're immediately swept up in the aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. It's him. It's... If it isn't my favorite student, Harland. Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles, sorry, Professor Dog, before he can finish his sentence. Please, call me Colonel. Colonel Sanders. <laughs> a hush murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of desks. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. <laughs> Sweat begins to beat across your brow. I didn't put deodorant on. You feel like everyone is looking at you, and you're definitely not wrong. And this over here must be sweaty sweats a lot. Maybe we should open that window back there up oh, before a faucet pits and melts into a puddle and evaporates entirely. Hold on, just a second. No one talks uh, about my friend like that. You two both know my name. We were in the same kindergarten class. What is with all these weird insults? Besides, when Fluffy Panda sweats, it's not gross. It's beautiful. Look at that shimmer. Ha <laughs> ha! You turn to Cur find Colonel Sanders standing in front of you. Colonel Sanders, beautiful angel that he is, stands before you, smiling gently. His hand outstretched, probably deodorant stick. Boy, howdy. This classroom gets... It's hotter than a Kentucky fry. That's what his actions would be. Please, use my handkerchief. <laughs> you freeze up. Colonel Sanders is talking to you. Wait, Colonel Sanders is talking to you about how sweaty you look. You're completely mortified. This can't be your first interaction. What if he never forgets this moment? How will you respond? Take the handkerchief. Stretch out your hand and Colonel Sanders places a fine silk handkerchief in it. It's so beautiful you hesitate to press it to your face, but when you do, the feeling is transcendent. It has a natural scent on it. The smell of the most delicious chicken you have ever smelled. Professor Dog steps in to settle the class down and gets set some ground rules. Hmm. <clears throat> Welcome to University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world. The birthplace of culinary legends past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears. There will be blood. There might even really be be really adorable tiny food. And when all is said and done, there will be battle. You will lift your sports and complete in the broom cooking arena. Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. Hey guys, sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a really good summer. I really miss you. Wyatt! Late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue. You're on the first track out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even in the right place? Don't you recognize me? This is my third year in the school with you as my teacher. Everyone stares at him blankly. Does no one remember me? I'm... You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. Let that be a lesson to you students, that tardiness is unacceptable. Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels. You turn to see the student sprinkle as graphic, who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. This is where... 
The class burst into laughter. Oh, Clank, you rascal. Sprinkles walks in the classroom. As everyone stands in silent obedience when he gets clicked to you, he lifts his nose into the air and takes a deep sm sniff. Don't smell me, dog. Hmm, your diet is lacking based on what I'm picking up here. You definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. You've never had a talking dog as a teacher before. But Sprinkles' reputation for being smart but tough is well known. Decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket, but what kind? Rubber ball. Reach beneath your apron and return with a rubber ball in your hand. Sprinkles' eyes go wide as he locks onto it. You toss the ball and he bounds after it, grabbing it in his mouth and swinging it from side to side before dropping it. Perfect. The thrill period passes quickly. It's not clear if that endeared you to him or not. Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the room, front of the room. Only two options remain. Next to Colonel Sanders. Hey, Fluffy Panda, there's a still seat here. It seems that no one has claimed this seat next to me, if you're interested. <laughs> I don't know how to do with that, but... Well, golly! <laughs> I don't know what is act. I don't know how to do a Kentucky accent. Two good options. Well, we gotta sit by Colonel Sanders. We're trying to clap his cheeks. That's what we're trying to do. You move to take your seat by Colonel Sanders. It appears he has brought no books, no pens or pencils. However, his perfect upright posture shows off the seriousness that makes you confident in his desire to learn. Thanks for offering me this seat. I've only had two rules. Do all you can do, and do it the best you can. It's the only way you ever get that feeling of accomplishment something. A feeling of accomplishing something. I don't know how to do your accent. That's so inspiring. A little off topic if you ask me, but okay. I think, well, well, now you see. I, I forgot, I got Foghorn Leghorn in my head, but I can't do it. Boy, I said boy. Okay, as soon as you have settled into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Think fast, it's time for a pop quiz. Yay, a pop quiz about me. <laughs> this incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz will tell me if you're ready for life at a culinary school. Keep your knife sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question one. Train A is traveling past to point B, and train B is traveling to point A. How important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Extremely looking at you, Pop. That's right. Forest is a tree as sh chicken is to slam dunk, baby. What? Forest is a tree. <laughs> That's wrong. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? A spork, obviously. That's right! What food is best for a broken heart? Chicken. This one. Anything as long as it's prepared with love and too much salt. That's right! The Sprinkle's a good boy? He's talking dog at the call. He's the best boy! That's right! Your total score is 4 out of 5. Only one wrong, not too shabby. You might just do all right, kid. You look up to see that Colonel Sanders has been watching you tally your score. Now it's with approval. May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch! Oh, that's exciting. Wow, the cafeteria is as nice and as a restaurant as you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. Of course. A delicious fragrance wafts, wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. You smell that? That must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I, I was... Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, I was... 
It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Woo! I don't know. <laughs> but I... Shh. Lunch, lunch, lunch. She said shh. In honor of the new semester, <laughs> I have prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. Uh -huh. That must be the smell I smelled. Indeed, that smell. You hold your breath, waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very talented. What well, were the rumors true? Is this? Colonel Sandals lifts a large bucket above his head. It's contents glimmer in the light. Piled high are huge pieces of chicken, breaded and fried to crispy golden finish. Just the way I like it. Wrong. The aroma envelops you and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has a, filled a bucket with chicken? What a noble concept, novel concept. Your stomach begins to grumble as if to say, stop thinking and start eating. For years, I have been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, I have been less than even 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. <laughs> if you look around and notice that every stu other student has some pen and paper scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> what? You think? We want your stupid recipe, dude? Pshaw! Nah, my dude. Nah. I'm just, uh... Drafting a last will and testament in case uh one of those ingredients is uh poison. Got him. <laughs> he is totally a JoJo character. He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at his sick burn. You wait to see what Zinger Ashley has prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, and I was just like uh writing in my diary. Dear Diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I know at that moment that only the true hands of a true at the hands of a true gentleman could cook fried chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that she is des that he is destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants him all to herself, but he's mine. Oh please. Hmm. Well, Van Van the man, huh. well, Van Van the man, man. If you don't want any, I'll take. I'll take this. <laughs> Wrong voice. <laughs> Whoa, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite, and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in the pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. Easy now. There is there enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates, dig in. You can take one of these pieces. I cannot get his accent, bro. It's so hard. Pieces of fried chicken out of his bucket and sink your teeth into it. It's amazing. Taste and Colonel Sanders' food transports you into another dimension. Oh, no. Along with your taste buds gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Save at the moment and everything that it tells you about Colonel Sanders' heart. Try and identify every flavor. Swim towards the light. All right, let's... The flavors in your mouth are beautiful, pure, and heavenly. What a guy! Alone with the flavors, you feel something that can only be described as love. Is that the 11th ingredient for a man, for a flavor? Are they the same? After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. You approach Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he is doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I wonder if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? Ha ha ha! How bold to come out and ask! It's an idea I had for a combination of new flavors. It will make, my make me a fortune and establish my legacy for all my time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. <laughs> Just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own and that I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush? The semester is only getting started. 
We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. He's clearly not going to give it up easily, but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel. Shouldn't let learning be fun? Aww. You've got Moxie, I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways. Make sure you're truly alone, and then he leans in. <laughs> you can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Just one ingredient, but you can't tell. I use... <laughs> Dick. <laughs> it's something my great-grandmother taught me. Wow! <laughs> you never guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure what you, where'd you get some if you searched. <laughs> I'll tell you where to get it. <laughs> the... Oh, I don't know what it is. It's blank. Uh, uh. While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. You find that Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. No, oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think of how, how my story will continue on after I've graduated. It sounds like you have big plans. I dare say the biggest. I will leave my work mark on this world. You can bet on that. Alone together for the first time, you figure out now it's the perfect time to show your personality to him. Neg him. Nag him? To show your, show your own strength? Neg him to show your own strength. What does that mean? Wow him with a big idea. To add an additional ingredient to really spice things up. Be modest but thoughtful. I'm clicking this because I don't know what it means. You know, I've been thinking about your secret recipe. Of course you were. You don't simply forget a flavor combination like that. That's exactly right. I remembered because I've tasted it before. I stopped at a random fried chicken stand the other day, and their chicken tasted exactly like yours. Hmm. Did you just compare my recipe to a random fried chicken stand? Well, yes, I did. But it was a really good stand, considering, especially considering it was frozen first. <gasps> frozen chicken? <laughs> Colonel Sanders struggles to conceal his emotion, fighting back tears of anger. I, I can't believe you'd say such a thing. You realize you've done irreparable damage to your relationship from what she it can never recover. He's hurt. How could you? Hey, Fluffy Panda, you saw that this game was a dating sim, right? That's your idea of dating. This is not the game for you. Try again. I failed. Bad ending. <laughs> okay. I have to try all the way over because I don't want to do that. Is there a save? Can I save? <laughs> ah! The dry biscuits have come back to destroy my game. Okay. Be modest but thoughtful. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. The flavors were complex but comforting. This they interplay between salty, sweet, and savory, and peppery. It was perfect. KFC did not like that compared their chicken to a fried chicken stand. But it's actually probably worse, so I mean. I appreciate the compliment, Fluffy Panda. I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. We, could just, we should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. You step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. Look at this place. It's magnificent. Finally, we get to show our stuff. Wait a second. Oh no, we have to show our stuff. What if I totally blow it? You're not going to blow anything except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creation. Welcome, students, to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll, we will be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Oh, that's kind of fucked up. Hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two? That is me and you, if it wasn't clear. Want to be my partner? Damn, I'm bored. Sure, Fluffy Panda. I'll prepare our station. 
Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Oh god. Oh, new partner. Beep beep. Bzz. Oh my, two, two potential partners. I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. It looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friends, friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. What do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? Clank? Clank? Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Clank today. Look at Clank's fucking face. What is that? <laughs> it's okay. I already ate. It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of the school even is at this juncture. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. That is terrifying. Warp, warp, warp. <laughs> Hold on there, fella. We don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. Ugh. Miss you? I hardly know you. Ha ha ha! Clank judders and panel shakes loose. You got the impression that is a sign of affection. Looks like you two will be fine. Now is the time to focus on your own cooking classwork. Alright, you two. For today's lesson, we will, we're going to keep it a simple pick. A basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It makes two flint to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders, fried chicken? Your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy! <laughs> I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. <laughs> Maybe mashed potatoes. <gasps> and gravy? I couldn't imagine one without the other. Oh, fuck. Colonel Sanders cast a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beat red and bears. You quickly turn away. I'll go get the potatoes. <laughs> no, please. Let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. <sighs> Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. Ashley! Sanders heart is my business, and you better keep your fingers off of my man. <laughs> Did someone call for me? Ah, oh, no, jeez, Van Van. While I'm over here crushing Fluffy Panda's dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of the classwork. That was the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns arms of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friend. Oh, howdy there, Ashley and Van Van. Are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Yeah. Actually, no. It looked like Fluffy Panda was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is. Those, these young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up to my level. Ha, oh, doubt it. Don't be rude, Van Van. Firstly, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that possession yourself at his station. Don't you feel deep down that we cast complimentary shadows? We fit together, like a thigh with a drumstick. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for the Colonel if you don't watch out. Ashley is going, really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Alright, turn to Colonel Sanders, hunk of hunk. I'm here to learn and express myself via my cuisine, not bicker with prima donnas. Partners were chosen at the beginning of class, so let's re all respect that format, okay? You turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm that you're on the same page. 
I chose Colonel Sanders and Colonel Sanders chose me, isn't that right? <laughs> a businessman respects all fair agreements. From contracts to handshakes, I took on Fluffy Panda as of my partner for this activity and I stand by it. I stand by it. Based on your team's behavior, I'd say you're perfect for each other. Neither you of you has Fluffy Panda's natural talent or their loyalty. <laughs> Being defended by Colonel Sanders leaves you feeling proud and full of potential. You look for sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis in their short but sturdy nature. <laughs> short but sturdy. Okay. <laughs> you look down at your station, you realize that in the tension of moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Yeah, what's up? What's up? Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfect creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do! Colonel Sanders extends his hands. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat out of which he pours a smooth brown gravy mother, some mother in a nearly finished potato dish. Gravy flows down on the mound of mashed potatoes. The result looks spectacular. Granny would be very proud. Colonel Sanders holds his fork out to you. You reach out and grab a hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same sport, but for that small moment, all of the madness and pressure in the crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and <laughs> lift a heaping sparkle up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then filled with rage without thinking, you fill, fling the spork full of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid beautiful face. Evan, do something! Do something! Scooping up a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he sinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on right there, Fluffy Panda. We do not waste food in Brom Cooking Arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you better be prepared to eat it from where it lands. And I have potato space? Bam Bam rushes back over a covered dish in his hand. That looks pretty good. Mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I have prepared a full meal, a glazed Gaze upon my specialty, braised tentacle of octopus and my silky salt water sauce. Planted on a battlefield, battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. You ignored me for too long, that ends now. It is I who will have the first bite, and you all look along within me. An interrupting student rushes at Bam Bam and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No, don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late, it has been eaten. I, uh, think I left something in the oven. I don't feel so good. Uh, he became a ghost! It killed him! Everyone step back! Don't take another bite! When you look back at the place, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up in Pop's mouth. Pop winces in pain for just a moment. And then is almost immediately back to his oblivious self. Oopsie. Tastes like poison. <laughs> the entire class has gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole cloud. They are as motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear as Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. Lord Almighty. 
I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. Um, hello? I just turned into a ghost over here. Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student, all this nonsense. Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. <laughs> Please, let me walk you home. What? Like for real? Oh, come on! <laughs> you follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today? Where are you gone? I want you to know. They're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me of why I became so passionate about the food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders? Yes, Fluffy Panda? There's something I need to tell you. Aha! Aha! Hold it right there. There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef the world has never seen. And every day since, I have been working toward that dream, day and night, never stopping, never resting, also lifting a lot of weights, like so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all our hearts, that our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Hey, no, I, uh, you, shut uh, up. I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that. Hmm. <laughs> I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? <laughs> Somewhere in the distance you hear a long sad sigh. Forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. <laughs> The sword monster is here to fight the hero. Oh shit. I uh... I think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds. How dare you threaten me! Just as I was letting my guard down and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. You afraid? Be afraid of me! Because I am a monster, see? Is he rhyming on purpose or is that just a coincidence? Before you can discuss syntax any further, it attacks. It's a turn-based fight sequence. What will you do? Attack. The best offense is a good de or the best offense is a good offense. You decide to go on attack. Which attack will you use? Cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. It just got real. The attack really upset Spork Monster. Spork Monster goes on the attack. They spit hot and gravy at you. You take one damage. Attack. You decide to go on the attack. It worked last time, right? Cook with love. Does one damage. Sport monster won't forget this. Sport monster is feeling really threatened by your attack. Sport monster ma focuses their mashed mind and draws in energy from Mother Earth itself. What is he doing? A spirit bomb? They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? Cook with love. Oh, he's about to actually block. At this rate, the semester might will probably be over before this fight is. Sport Monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble, they go on the attack again. Sport Monster's use uses Utilitensil. You take two damage from the attack. You take if you take much more damage, you're not going to survive the battle. Decide to attack again. Cook with love. Fork Monster is oozing cheese sauce onto the lawn of the quad. I wonder who is going to have to clean that up. Feeling vulnerable, Sport Monster is prepared for its ultimate attack, Rounded Edge. Vile villain! Your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens. 
Pop pop pinch. Pop pop power pinch. <laughs> pop pop power pinch does 10 damage. Sport monster is defeated. You saved me. An injured sport monster spews steam into the night. Fair this wretched beast. You managed to tamp down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he is still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast, and don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. I won't forget this, and I certainly won't be back like you said. The sport monster scuttles it off into the night. Defeated monster leaves left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it is so much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. Your last name, the last name you have signed it out is Burko. Hmm. Burko, that name sounds... Burko? Uh, that name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The whole world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being lifted, pulled up over you, and you are tucked in tightly. Good night, my colonel. <laughs> in your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love. Dreams are weird. That's really weird. You will wake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories or premonition? And then there was the secret ingredient that Colonel went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about your encounter with the sport monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I think this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be, um... I think I might like Clank! Like him? Like, like, like? I know it sounds moving fast, but there's something about him. I like him. I like, like him. We got to talking after class, and he's actually totally a sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He's told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in his high school? No, but that does make complete sense. Yeah, but he was so popular that he was voted in prom king at school he didn't even go to. And was also the convertible that he himself rode in front and at the front of the homecoming parade. I'm thinking maybe something got lost in the pressure cooking let the cooker language translation to that. Either way, maybe it'd be best if you Took it slow with this new boy, like I am with Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders, the coolest guy in the school? The most famous student to ever attend University of Cooking School Academy for Learning? You're a thing now? We definitely connected yesterday. <laughs> sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't he why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? Oh no, am I telling her the secret ingredients? I'm a scammer. No, your bestie's eyes light up. A secret ingredient? Yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. So this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical bar garden where I was wondering. This can't be good. He told me about all his passion for spices. Secret spices. That man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said it, it was a powder created from a super duper rare dried flower petals and that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. 
Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled a su my suitcase with them and brought them home! He was so nice, he even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later, when I cooked them, a very strange feeling came over me, and the flavor was unlike anything I have ever tasted. I think you're being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. Whatever. Anyhow, we both share an interest in cooking, so we've stayed in touch, you know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe, and besides, I only know this one ingredient. So, I doubt it'd be much use to anyone. Cough, fibber, cough. Please, please, please. It would mean the world to me. No one has to know it came from you or Colonel Sanders. What do you think? Should you? Oh yeah, we gotta protect the secret. I don't even know the secret. Quickly think of a fake ingredient name. I don't know. How about oregano? Oh, it was. I knew. That's what it was. I know. Sounds like something from a witch potion. But what can you do? I am mute. Wow. Her eyes light up, imagining such a thing, and <laughs> you figure that you've satisfied her curiosity and she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone that you can't see. That's probably not good. Or you can ask her to confirm that she was definitely not texting her secrets to other people. You are interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossoms petal fill the air. <laughs> what the heck is that horse? It's Colonel Sanders! He's arriving to school! Stand back and admire his majestic glory. Colonel Sanders' horse is truly a thing of beauty. It is the derpiest <laughs> looking horse. Without ever acknowledging that he's being watched, he does a short horse dance before dismounting with the flourish. He then slaps the beautiful creature gently on his rear, sending it, sending it running free to the countryside. You are so struck by the sight of him that you lose the ability to speak coherently. Oh, I didn't realize anyone was watching. Don't worry, he knows his way home. I don't know. His accent changes every five seconds. It's too hard to remember. You attempt to compliment Colonel Sanders, but the words don't come out exactly right. What a horseful butte you have. I mean, what a horseful butte you have. Dang it! That's what I just said. Being a good friend, Miriam attempts to cover for you. Oh, Fluffy Panda just gets really nervous about brown people they like. What? This is not helping. I mean, they got food poisoning and were up all night. It was gruesome. You have, should have seen it. He gives you a wink and a smile as if to say, situation handled. Can't blame a girl for trying. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van, are doing something bad. By the way they're, they're hiding, you know it must be really bad. Like counterfeiting recipes bad. Experimenting with restricted ingredients bad. Summoning a demon bad? You try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulder, but he sees you coming. Whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Why don't you make a, like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? You immediately dress the rivals down for their immature behavior. Honor school is to be respected. This kind of nonsense is a waste of everyone's time. Now you've upset them. <sighs> oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, aren't you? You make the rules? <gasps> I'm not sure you know a good meal if it ain't you. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes panache. Panache. And it doesn't hurt to be used a little evil. Hey boo boo, we've got to use a little bit of that evil. You finally get a look at what the two, at what it was they were hiding and you instantly recognize it. It's a book just like the one you found after your encounter with the sport monster. That's the same book that I found last night in the quad. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his back. I don't know what you're talking about. This book is a family heirloom and its contents are secret. You notice that they haven't just been studying the book. They've tried, they've got pop pinned to the wall and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them with his mouth. 
We are playing, hee <laughs> hee. Before you can dig any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Beep, beep. I think it must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Bam Bam's meaty foot. Hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts. You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. Bzzz, womp. Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language, not even from a stand mixer. Womp womp. No, your mother was a stand mixer. Bam Bam jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Bam Bam, sending him flying across the room. Attack me, Colonel Sanders. These crazy men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me, but I'm not interested in either of them. Ashley's tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her Ashley eyelashes at the stupid freaking chicken one. Colonel Sanders, surely he must know this is a ruse, right? Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. I can't do his voice. Save it for the arena. At least, or don't honestly, I, what do I care? I've got lofty aspirations, career aspirations to focus on. Maybe I can help you with the business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to signal the start of the class today. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Students, students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town and my tiny little legs are very, very tired. But I am here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. You try to give Sprinkles a pat on the head, but he snarls at you. Sorry, sorry, get a little worked up if people try and pet me before. I've had my morning coffee, let that be a lesson to you. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. You want to pay attention to the lesson, you truly, truly, you do. Which is why in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed their name on Hancock. <laughs> That's funny. But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders and you miss most of the important parts. When you come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. With what cause? Well, Fluffy Panda? Naturally, this appears to you, for, to you to be a simple platter. Which item do you want to sample? The Shimmering Pepper. I don't want to try the dog biscuit. Brightly colored pepper stands out from the other items. It sparkles in a most eye-catching way. So naturally, you grab it, reach out, grab it, and eat it right away. However, your body is not prepared for the heat. The pepper has triggered an intense spice hallucination. Feels like forever as you trip through the universe. My friend, ooh. This guy again. I'm here to give you an important message. Ooh. You must have been in my death. Fulfill your destiny. All you must do is... <coughs> I was saying to fulfill your destiny, all you must do is... <coughs> Sorry, I think I still got some spice stuck in my throat. It's fine, I'll work through... <coughs> to fulfill... Ha 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 The prophecy... <coughs> you must... You feel yourself begin to gain consciousness. Oh man! You come to and find everyone staring at you. That pepper was the last of its kind on Earth, and now it's gone forever. You think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. But before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights down. And your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Today's lunch will be prepared. Be a time competitive cook-off. Level the actress with these two is off the charts. Step up and tell them you're on. Bit of lunchtime competition, huh? 
Count me in. I, if I have to wipe the table with you fools before I set my lunch down on it, then so be it. I'm not the fool. I'm not the fool. You're the fool, fool. Good one, Van Man. <laughs> I don't know. I like your gumption, Fluffy Panda. I'll be watching your performance. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. How now, students? Please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sportsing court. Finally, a little silence. She breathed a sigh of relief. At least not until we turn on the timer! And just then, a huge light flashed you in the face, flashing the words, Timer ready. That's what I'm talking about! I stand corrected. The hard way builds up, so builds solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. And that's an original quote by me. And in case anyone was wondering, I hope it's a message that lifts you to victory. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure. And now is my time to chance to shine. I will defeat you myself. You had his chicken and you ma made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one. And you're feeling that like you can really impress him again here. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. That's right, but how would you have even gotten into the school without knowing that? I didn't know, I guess. Winter gets to rub my... <laughs> Winter gets to rub my flirt furry belly. Let that enticing offer motivate you. You're going to need to season the chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. Leaven. Leaven herbs and spices. That's right. You may no might not know all the ingredients yet, but at least you're headed in the right direction. Tail wagging intensifies. Now that you've got the basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind offers the most flavor? Gratitude. That's right. You must never take the opportunity for granted if you hope to succeed. Your classmates are rooting for you, but sit Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. you. Better pick up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you to never forget where you come from. Every day you meditate on this device and drawing energy from that place. Oh, well, I don't know. So where does it come from? That's right. This is your shot. And you're not going to miss it. You try to shut out this noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. Sizzling. Oh, fuck. What was it? Don't make me get the... <laughs> don't make me get the spray bottle. I guess next question. You know it's Colonel Sander out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, Fluffy Panda. He's actually cheering you on, which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching you makes you totally forget what you're doing. Now all you can think about is Colonel Sanders. You're standing out on a desert island with only one dessert cookbook. Which do you take? What a hunk! I know, right? <laughs> you know what? You know what? Shouldn't you be focused on the challenge? You're falling behind. What's that have to do with crafting spectacular fried chicken and delicate baked biscuits? Woof, woof. You're really struggling to keep up. The next station over, Ashley begin has already begun plating elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. To make up time, you toss your biscuit dough into a strand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. Eh, uh, yikes. This is popped. I know you love nothing more than a, seeing a fellow appliance utilized in a kitchen battle, but sometimes that means a sacrifice in the personal touch. Brrrr. You might not have many hands, but Fluffy Panda does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't get far by going the easy way. When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand into the mixture to rescue the dough before it's overmixed. Oh, God. Puffy Panda, no! 
Oh, but you're not fast enough and your hand gets stuck and immediately crushed by the... Oh. No way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. What you, oft, what you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. Everyone stop what you're doing. Everyone stop what you're doing right now. The battle is over. It can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweetheart, look at your hand. You simply cannot go on. Aw, that's too bad. And here I am, a completed dish, ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. No, no, it wouldn't be fair to compare the two on account of Fluffy Panda's injury. See, Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he looks onto the dish. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skip straight to the sword. Under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide desert ray of desert delights taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. I was going to ask Fluffy Panda to do the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that purring this creamer of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you don't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sanders pours the sh chocolate... Hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. What is that? Inside, you'll find a inside you'll find a delicate fried cheese croquette, a topping, a slice of honeycomb, ice cream, two waves, tender nou nougat, and pearls of blueberry jelly. Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger into the chocolate sauce. Mm. Simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it, Ashley? <gasps> oh, you! <laughs> As he places a sauce-covered finger into his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of, dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. Put me between. Fight me. You reach out with your apron to wipe the sauce off his glistening face. Colonel Sanders recoils and brushes you back. Shit. <laughs> The goatee isn't just a fashion statement, it's also functional. I was saving that flavor for later. God damn it. I thought you didn't like it, dude. If someone that didn't like it, you were saving it for later? Oh my god. Colonel <laughs> Sanders sucks. Alright, bubbling, sizzling silence. That's right, when they taste your cooking, they will be so taken with it that you are unable to speak. You nose Carl Sanders out of the corner of your eye. Okay, that's where I go to crap. Okay, after that point, I can't win, right? Okay, so I get the same ending if I get them all right, right? Not my hand. Hmm. <gasps> Colonel has a rage. Your rage burns so intensely within your eyes, they're about to burst into flames. Flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn into ash. And they fall off your face, which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester. Perhaps forever. Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried brow, you run for the quad to be alone. The beautiful weather feels like an insult inside of you. A storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are now Art Ashley are now in love and have decided to get married. And he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. 
not just from the devastating loss, but from that run-in with that mixer and that small fire. We should get that checked out. I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. I'll never be a master chef. Failure is a part of life. Not just for you, but for all of us. Don't you think I've never failed at anything before? That's exactly what I think. Well then, think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you. Enrolled in culinary school, incredibly handsome, successful, motivated. Well, handsome, sure. I was born that way. But I've walked other paths and arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life, but I failed as an obstetrician. I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. I was passionate about livestock, but I even failed as a mule handler. That one was especially humiliating. Mules can be so cruel. <laughs> I didn't know. People see me, my delicate ribbon tie, and my well-kept beard and assume that I've all got it all together. Which is true now, but it hasn't always been. Sounds like the guy could really use a hug. I resolved then that I was going about to something. No amount of hours, labor, or money would deter me from giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders changes focus, you can see something in the side of a burning passion. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to for something better. My new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. Yay! Just as your moment grows into you are interrupted by a threatening shadowy presence. That was scarf from the night before you prepare for the worst. It's the Spurk Monster! Orko? It is I. I. I know I said I wouldn't be back and after the whole fight to the death thing, but maybe you didn't really want to see me anymore, but... I just wanted to say that I was wrong to attack you. And I apologize. I know what it's like having to always look over your shoulder. Monster problems, am I right? Am I right? Aw, oh, thanks, Porco. I'm glad there are no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark can really ride a person up. I also wanted to apologize for the way I switched right into attack mode. I know that you're strong and cook at school can put a person under a lot of stress. I actually used to go to school. I wasn't always a sport monster, you see. I don't believe it. You were human once? Well, no, I was a golden retriever, but I was still a student. Until one day when me and kids used us with the magic spell book cast a dark enchantment on me and I was forever transformed. Magic spell book? Precisely. I had procured a copy for myself, but somewhere along the way I had lost it. You find such a precious book? I beg of you, respect it. You're a powerful chef and shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. No, you should be protecting the innocent from those who ch would cheat them through sorcery and guile. You need me. Don't fear. I'll be there. It sounds like there are some bad cooks in the kitchen life. Bluff it, Panda. Uh, together, I'm sure we can defeat them. Come back to me. I had a way and we can discuss. Personal invite. You can't imagine what Colonel Holmes, Sanders' home might be, must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. Stepping inside- oh, wow, that is a nice house. Look at that freaking chicken. Stepping inside Sanders' home, surrounded by- <laughs> Surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. It looks like you've lived just such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Every day can be an adventure, if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made a decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Well, there is something. It's just a side dish that I've been tinkering with. I'm trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Noel Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what dish he might be describing. A smith to pair with something spicy or something crispy, both perhaps? Now you've got him right where you want him. 
Would you reveal your new creation to him or keep it a secret just for you? Reveal it. You decide that you're ready as you will ever be to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. Before you can talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive headfirst. You reach into your lunch bag for a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you my original coleslaw. The shredded, oh my god, the shredded cabbage dish, that's gross. This is in light of Colonel Sanders' long supply way. <gasps> Magnificent! Together you chow down on the creamy slaw until just a spoonful remains in the bowl. You mind if I hold on to the last bite? I'd like to have it around so that I can just admire its taste later and think back on this moment. You could offer to make him more, but he seems like a very simple mental kind of guy. Sure, why not? Please make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a moment. We realize that would, now would be the perfect time to do some snooping. Around the room are various items that you can look closer at. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotion. Tap on an item to discover more about the colonel. The chicken. You know it's a very realistic stuffed chicken sitting on a corner of a table. Where you, when you pick it up, you realize it isn't just realistic, it's real. Taxidermy must have been important to Colonel Sanders when it was alive. A little note clipped to the chicken's foot reads, The true state bird of the great state of Kentucky. Tap on an item to discover more about the colonel. What are these? A lock of silver hair woven through the teeth of comb. Upon further inspection, you realize that the hair therein isn't just silver in color. It's almost actually made of spun silver. A scented candle. You pick it up and try to identify the smell. Hour tool. Freshly starched collar. Piece of wood floating in a lake. Summer of 69. The summer of 69. Oh. It's one of the secret recipe ingredients. It's blank. Tap on an item to discover more about the colonel. Gaze out the window and across the vast lake and mountain range beyond, beyond. Just then, the ghost of the student pops up. Are you thinking about heading on to the world on a quest to avenge my death? Wait, what? I've never even learned your name. Why would I offend you? I could just tell you my name right now. It's... Can't you see I'm in the middle of something? You open the crack of the window and swept out by the breeze. that Papa Kentucky? One of the framed photos shows an old man who looks a bit like Colonel Sanders standing with a friend. They hold a fried chicken drumstick and appear to be cheersing them. You look closely and there's something, there's a little short inscription. I wonder who my friend Pete is. I don't know who Pete is. The photo appears to be Colonel Sanders, except he's an old man visiting the pyramids of Egypt. Maybe this is where he discovered one of the secret herbs and spices. An adorable little baby boy, <laughs> this stupid fun. from the goatee and mustache combs combo and his he sports. You figure that must be Colonel Sanders himself. That or maybe the drumstick that he seems to be waving like a rattle. Who friend is a baby picture of them, just themselves. Probably the same type of person who would make their own face the logo of the company they found am I, founded, am I right? Take a closer look at a large urn sitting in a nearby pedestal. There's a plaque on it. It's dusty, but when you wipe it, you can read out the inscription. It says, Here lies the ashes of all my past career, past careers and business failures. Poor guy. This must be where he keeps the secret recipe. You think for a moment, what number is important to the Colonel Sanders? Then it dawns on you, 11. As soon as you turn the dial to 11, 11, 11, safe opens. Decide that you find a single note. Hmm. Can chicken be prepared sashimi style? <laughs> you open the door in Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of signature white suits hanging within. You take one off the hanger and try it on. The jacket is a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in his scent. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they meant? Before you can look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that he has been working on and he wants you to taste it. You try to act casual until he asks, asks you why you're wearing his jacket. Aww. I don't usually loan those out, but I must say it does look good on you. 
I don't know. Oh crap, the jacket. You forgot to take it off. You decided that now is your moment to make a big move. Whoa, 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 this isn't that kind of game. <laughs> Not that we blame you for trying. But still. Game over? What? Okay. I thought this was that kind of game. What? Ah, oh, debated. Oh, I guess we're not clapping cheeks after all. Unfortunate. <sighs> all this work, and it's not even that type of game. Oh my god. My gosh. Tell the truth, I guess. You confess. I think I've developed feelings for you. I might be developing feelings for you too. But I'm concerned. I can't let anything get in the way of my dreams. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. But the thought of leaving Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you a pause. You stop yourself. Colonel? Hmm. Yes, Fluffy Panda. I honestly think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should take things slow. Talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. Dream sequence. Zzz. You wake up to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. You, did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? The only time will truly tell. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. Holding a gorgeously plated breakfast, your mouth waters at the sight of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's meticulous. You taste Colonel Sanders' food, and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So would you say that we're the perfect match? I don't know. How presumptuous. My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. Ah, <laughs> such confidence, such grace. Could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? Flatter him, I guess. You know, I think we make, might make a great team. A single tear begins to pull in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. And with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner, could he be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings. You're on the verge of tears. Unable to speak, the only answer you can find is to run out of the door and go home. There's still one more day of school left, after all. And the University of Cooking School Academy of Learning lives for learning waits for no one, except for Colonel Sanders. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is here waiting for you. Where have you been? I... Because I had one heck of a night. I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something had happened to you. Okay, I was just... But now that it turns out that you're fine, I can finally get you to the speed on the Saga of Miriam. Sure, but... You will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date! I think I can believe that. Because I've been partnered up with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. Of course I told him you better keep your tiles turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. But he was just interested in spending one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know know me, so I said, yeah, sure. I can get to know the little male and talent guy. Long story short, he took me to skydiving with his friends, but things quickly spiraled out of control. Does she just say skydiving as if it, that's a typical first date to go on with a t talking pressure cooker? <laughs> now I'm not really sure where we stand. You don't give Miriam time to tell her your whole story. However, bottling up the details on your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date too, back to Colonel Sanders' house where I spent the night with him. You what? Nothing happened, but the emotional connection wowzers. Miriam tells you to move on from the whole Colonel Sanders' deception and focus on school. Being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong. You don't want to be right. 
After a short argument, you both agree to go your separate ways. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals at the quad. You can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop, though he might <laughs> he himself might not quite grasp that fact. Because you know, he's Pop. What's a swirly? It sounds delicious. Oh, it's... Oh, it's great. I'll order you up one right away. I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. <laughs> sprinkles is the dog and the treat. Uh... You can get your swirly dip, too. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Mm. Because I'm literally the biggest person at this school? <laughs> there is that horse that comes from Santa Rosa school, but who would dare pick on such a giant and beautiful creature? Look. You've got some nerve, a fluffy panda, suggesting, suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. Now you're twisting my words, and I will have it. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you win some pain. Doesn't look like you can go cooking on like that. Might as well just give up. I'll never give up. Never. Colonel Sanders arrives just as it appears things are... Close to boiling over, a naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? Fluffy Panda, how's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fighting form by this afternoon. <sighs> Are you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday I almost broke a, a nail from winning so hard. Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing complimenting her? Mm. What about my flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? It was clear that your passion about how your food was perceived. That's a lot of words to say it was bland. Excuse me, Fluffy Panda. I am more than capable to speak for myself. <sighs> Maybe you could tell me more of your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel. I'm always the interested in discussing the fine arts of foods. See you inside, Fluffy Panda. Annoyed by the Colonel Sanders ability to see Ashley for who she Ashley for who you know she it really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel by that interaction with Ashley, you take out the spell book you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Whoa, that's the book? Looks like bad news. Just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of gr grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful? I can think of one sure way to find out. You open to a page covered with arcane warnings. Arcane warnings. Cast only in extreme case of emergency! It says around the edges of the page. I could use this spell here and it says it will erase anyone I choose from all my memories. Let's scrub out Colonel Sanders. It'll probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. That is way drastic. Couldn't you do something else like anything else? Not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger? Okay, fine. It is dastard. drastic, but desperate times call for desperate measures. You've got a memory racing spell right in front of you and a pretty good excuse to try it out. No, I'm good. Take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's time, almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room waiting for the students to arrive. Close his voice to make a quick announcement. <clears throat> I want you all to know I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. This cute little nose scratches up and he begins to breathe quickly. Yeah, let's wait to see what happens. Brinkle stops in his track. He focuses in on the window. The room is deadly silent. When you follow his gaze, you see a tiny urn squirrel perched on the cherry tree outside. Brinkle turns feral and runs into to the window of Miss classroom. He begins barking uncontrollably at the dog outside. Terrence, I told you to never to come back here. Terrence, I will destroy you, Terrence! 
Sprinkles is barking ferociously. Drool flying all over his face. The squirrel looks over, but he doesn't say anything back. You wonder, is that even a talking squirrel? Who's named Terrence? Who named him Terrence? You better not show your chubby cheeks around here ever again. After Sprinkles is satisfied that his presence has been felt by not only Terrence, but any other squirrel on hearing destiny, he returns to his profession professorial town. Oh, I apologize for that outburst. That actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Fluffy Panda, for reminding me to dole out the, the indispensable bit of wisdom. You see, but before he can go on any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Sprinkles is interrupted by whirs and sparks coming from the back of the room. I told you to save it till after class. Aww. You think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language of mechanical noises. Whirr. Whirr. But no, you had to show off for your cool friends, Jeff and Joan, JJ, J and J forever. Watch us form a triangle in midair as we just sit. <laughs> that face. <laughs> Triangles are the strongest shape, you don't you know? This is or this is Yeah, well, that doesn't make it a great date. Eat or uh. now take Jafe and Joan with you. You can all hand hold hands as you pedal down the mountain off or off a cliff for all I care. Eat. Pike begins to shudder, Steam is so sad, pours out of the gaps in his panel, and then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. Oh, he's dead! You killed him! He... Uh... No amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that, Clank. Clank burps out a completely deep-fried sneaker, considering that he himself has wills not feet, it is enti not entirely clear where it came from. Oh, he's fine again. In terms of deep fried footwear, I guess it looks okay. Plank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see that entire thing go down. Poor Plank. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pail all over the final day of school. Well, that was unfortunate. But we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition, showdown challenge exam! I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all in the arena. But before you can think about your iconic competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. Hey, Miriam, are you okay? Okay. I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug spilling several drops of droplets of hot cocoa on all over the floor. How could he embarrass me in like class like that in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa was a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke, even if the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're going to cruise through this finals test and hit the carpool line to success city. Miriam brides up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. <laughs> You're not going to settle up on Colonel's... Sanders Stallion to ride off to the sunset without me. I might. Of course not. Well, maybe sort of, but I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it. And a ranch big enough for the both of us and whoever else we want to bring along. Not Pop or Clank or anyone else you met today. Tomorrow or this whole year. So what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the first someone to show a little interest anyhow. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu t for today. I'm going to make a very special soup. And I bet the professor dog is going to love it up. While you were pet talking Miriam, you completely missed lunch, but that's okay because you had a better idea of how to spend your time before the exam. You decided to head to the arena to early to practice the dish. This is it, the location of the final challenge. Test of will, a test of courage, a test of challenge! and a chance to beat the pants off Van Van and the supposed Man Man and his eviler counterpart, Ashley. As 
planned, you began to run through the quick test of recipe you've been working on. Fluff it, Panda's famous hot chicken pot pie. After practicing for months, making this dish come second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven, but as soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. Fluff it, Panda, what are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm thinking of visualizing success, looking at my station and picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake, and the smell is slowly filling the space around you. Mm. Visualizing that, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. You can usually happily share your food with anyone who is hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. You decide that the time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but that decision gets hard to stick to when the oven timer goes off behind you. Mess up about your practice dish. Okay, okay, yeah, got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know my nose can smell a pop pie from 400 yards! <laughs> That's an oddly specific distance to put. You expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You know it was pot pie just from the smell? Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with a dipped stall butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? Ha <laughs> ha, no. I can smell that it was made with a hip and help enough TLC. But I'll probably be start burning any second if you don't pull it out. The moment of truth. Wow. <gasps> That's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved culture cooking and I could eat it this all day. There's no time left. This final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no rules. That is except to cook everything you've got. The step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide that the mac and cheese plus the pot pie you've been practicing are just the dish that you'll put push you over the edge to victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are while preparing prepping wildly around other dishes per their usual over the top selves. Miriam has her ma giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go big, going small. Colonel Sanders seems to be harvesting his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe fried chicken. The intensity in the room starts at full at starts at, at full, then at 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone's calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it levitates to the air. Egg wash! I don't even know what that word is. Egg wash! Miriam furiously injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend, blaster blaster! Faster blaster! Van Van flexes his pectorals as his chops on it putting a sea urchin. That's rock and roll! Ashley cook scoops her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula! Even Clint gets in on it. Alright, dial. Pressure point. Chicken cooking technique. Wait, when did Clint learn to speak English? <gasps> That's the singularity as was foretold. We must have let it happen, or the cooking of appliance uprising will take us all. Well, the extra. Van Van quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him out of the back door of the arena. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spellbook out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the table? You've got a book of your own, on your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's almost certainly evil magic? No. Do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders told me to. Who needs magic when you got the passion? I'm going to do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your terms and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. I believe in you, Fluffy Panda. Miriam notices it too. 
And I've always believed in you, Fluffy Panda, since we were little kids. Because I'm your best friend forever. You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who is cooking? Tiny food, sh tiny food, short cook time. I'm all, I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. Uh -huh. It's the secret ingredient. Oh no. Oh, she doesn't know that you lied and the green was made up. And where the world did she get the I am new from? The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up in a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. It is I, Steve, the Spork Monster. Steve, what happened? Wait, what happened to Borco? You're not here to battle me, are you? Weak Spork Monsters are many. I think Burko had a day off, but you have conjured Steve, and I hate to battle, and I'd say you're doing pretty all right. Oh. Oh, hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impressed me. Mind if I, ha I hang out? I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve the Spork Monster notices that you've got to groom our stash beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Crisscross some magical items and accidentally summon me, huh? Huh, you guess it. Sort of. If you're here, would you mind tossing me some fresh noodles in a pot of salted water? I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a top chef. Actually, you know, when I was just a little sport pup back in the old country, you can feel Spoke Monster wind up to tell you a very long involved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should just watch from the stands. I really need to focus on the competition. I understand. I, it's kind of like that time in Monster School when I fell asleep during scare tactics, and when I woke up, Pasta serious stare at Steve, and he takes a hint. Never mind. I'll talk to you later. Good luck. Except for this huge setback, you don't even know how you can win. Summon extra power from deep down within yourself. I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy throws through your body. My heart is pure, my hands are steady, my taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for. Yes, Fluffy Panda, you are the chosen one, you will avenge me. The power you've been summoning immediately fades back out. You hear the rise of the lab, I inspired monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off of the ground. Energy courses through your body. You know that th with this power, you can do anything except turn back time, which would be super useful because while you were powering up your chicken pot pie, I would cook overcooked in the oven and can't be served. But don't worry, dear fluffy panda. You may have suffered some setbacks, but not all is lost. Impress me with your fortitude. Colonel Sanders decided that you have earned his support. I've been watching you today and I must say I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the pushes. Steps up to your station and stands right behind you. I'm here all to help. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese and time is almost up so you're going to need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never been really been my thing. I follow my heart. What a guy. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders that you've ever laid eyes on. And besides, something un something kind of unexpected combinations can have surprise and effects that surpass their individual efforts. Are you suggesting fried chicken and mac and cheese? If we combine forces, we can form the perfect food union. Time's up, students. When time expired, this is a moment everyone has been waiting for. You must now prepare to prevent, prevent present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. Themes were missing some students. Huh? Like? From off screen, you hear a cute. You're an acid giggle that can only come from one student. <laughs> I'm flying! 
Sounds like coming from that broom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? Inside the, of the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there right now! Let me guess, did Van Van have something to do with this? When, when someone asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a salad! It looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing as how he didn't cook anything. I can't feel my legs. May I be excused? Sure. <laughs> you kids and your pranks, I must say. I'm not the worst prank in UCSAL history, but that is not exactly your book material. Wait a second. Pranks? Pranks? Link, where did that pressure cooker roll off to? You can't wait to hear a signature word or beep or an other monopoeia, but there's none. Somehow, he must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please collect your final projects. Yes, it has been a long semester. Wow, three whole days long. After days of hard work, the time has finally come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now describe your dish. I've made tender udon noodles and savory soup. My word, it is so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny Naruto Maki? I spy a float in the itsy bitsy bowl. Yes, chef. Please call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. Yes, Sprinkles, and some green tea made from baby tea leaves that I've picked myself. Snickles, <laughs> Sprinkles. Terry fully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink dog tongue touch dip into the bowl. Sublime, would anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on, I'm not one of those dogs who don't some floss. I even have a really cute electro electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine, I'll enjoy it all by myself. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much. It was a less than a thimble's worth, worth of soup. A plus, rarely do I taste such a dish with so much love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. Thank you, Fluffy Panda, for helping me to believe in myself. Van Van, you're up! Now describe your dish. I'm... I made... Uni over smooth egg custard and axe-hewn fortune shell topped with caviar. Did you skewer one type of an or Did you skewer one type of orchin with spines from a second different color type of orchin? Yeah, sprinkles. Bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. And a bit much is kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni, but he can't get his nose close to, on account of all the spikes. He gets the pot erratically, causing the custard to sauce around. Oof, oof. Please be gentle with my cuisine. Urgh. Finally, Sprinkle goes all in, tongue first, but he can't get all past the needles. He reels back at it, so his tongue is poked and prodded. Ouch! My tongue! The professor appears to have having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't eat this. Keep it poking through my tongue. <laughs> Death qualified. Stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of spikes would make it difficult to eat? Dejected, Van Van does not go gentle into the night. Disqualified for glamour? Don't discount sympathy. This isn't the last you've heard of me. Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know, I know, yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk, get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student, Ashley, it's time to step up. Now describe your dish. Hi, mate. Orange blossom turquoise delight and a light rose water syrup. Topped with a fresh meringue 
and connected by sugar glass. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite, quite delightful. However, I ask you that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Don't eat the food at a cooking school. Got toast in your ears or something, Fluffy Panda? I told you it's a display piece. Actually, I must say it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it and did an extremely good job cooking it too. I didn't realize that we were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to college of eating school for the hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you can smell it if you truly absolutely insist it, but don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. The food cannot be eaten. It cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley and she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You would know I had cuisine if it cut you! And with that, Ashley stormed off to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and white by everyone. This isn't the last you've heard of me, either! This class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cook, step up together. Two chefs! What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become has become something else. He examines- it does look good. <laughs> he examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing into the bowl. I would like to try that. Uh oh, I don't have a good feeling about this. Somewhere in the room, a little drum roll plays. This when I thought I've seen everything in the kitchen, you've given me this thing. And completely blow me away. In my 49 years of dog- dog years of life, I've never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class. You pass, you pass, and you pass, and you get a pass. Everyone gathers around and partakes of the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win. Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item is so impressive, even the Van Van and Ashley are drawn back in the, by the magnet, magnetic fragrance. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on. How could they be better than this one? Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment to get their groove on. The cafeteria has completely been redecorated into order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. DJ Dog is this in the house! Ah, ah, woo -woo. <laughs> you knew that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world-renowned turntablist. Who else says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were the villains. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting. No ghosts allowed at graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. It was all a trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh, amusing. And now that everyone is together, it's the sport monster. He has totally mellowed out. Everyone, the sport monster is no more. From hell on out, I'd prefer that everyone refer to me by my new name, Party Monster. Students try to finish what he had to say, but everyone is wrapped up talking to the spork sorry party monster. Dejected student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found love in her cooking. You know she's going, she's going to do great. A red carpet rolls out on the room floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? I wonder who. <laughs> oh, wow. It's Pop. He's arrived late to the dance, but apparently for good reason. Walking to the, the carpet, you see him perched atop his dirty chef's hat, a crown. Welcome back, Pop. I know you were unable to complete the final exam and accept your diploma. So we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured at least we could do for the school's dean. 
Oh, now I get it. And we got a new wing on the school, not to mention of the honor of educating the son of Chancellor and such and such. The music at the dance is interrupted by the sound of spark, sparking and electrical hissing. It's Clank who arrived late to the dance. My nose is so soaked about I can't breathe. I can't breathe! Now that I have arrived at graduated, I can reveal my truth. Whoa, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank, and I am not of this earth. I am actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? What? Hmm. I actually feel like I knew this the whole time. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? I don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. I've just begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figuring out who you are, Clank. Look at that freaking face. You're blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear that she has managed to surpass you in that regard. I understand, kind of. Humans are weird. A portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Howdy, classmates. Just like the first day you met him, he has prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. This time it's a full meal. I didn't get, I didn't get to the, be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man, but I'm not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. The end question mark? Huh. No, it's not the end. As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Bluff at Panda, what are you doing sitting all alone? Oh, you know, just waiting for the right person to come ask me to dance. I wonder, might you tell me, what are the qualities that you would expect to find in such a lucky person? Off the top of my head, oh, I don't know, a spicy musk, a tidy, tidy goatee, and a degree from the University of Cooking of Academy for Learning, just to name a few. It is truly my lucky day. Would you dance with me? Yes, I would love to. As you glide across the dance floor hand in hand with Colonel Sanders, the future stretches out in front of you. And once my hundredth French house is up and running, I'll be ready to take a day off. And I'm glad, I'll be glad, so glad to spend t together with you, Fluffy Panda. How sweet. We'll work together and play together. <laughs> Colonel Sanders stops dead in his tracks. Work together while well, um, I think this is something I'll just need to do by myself. But who will help you run the restaurants? I don't believe I need help. Besides, uh, based on your time at school, do you really think running restaurants is the best path forward? Does he hate me? Could it be you found a... What? Can you live with only half of him? Will you be able to endure sharing him with... Did I not get the good ending? I suppose I could enroll in pastry school. Oh, my dear Fluffy Panda, I'm sure you'll find your place eventually. And along the way, you'll have me by your side. Man. Did I not get the good ending? The Lord Almighty, dude. Alright, I'm gonna play it for the good ending. What do I need to do for the good ending? Such a long game. I'm triggered. That's good for me. I'm not playing it again. <laughs> that was cool, though. Thanks for watching, as always, guys. And uh, that was a pretty cool game. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed playing, though. It was pretty interesting. Definitely weird for KFC to come out with something like this, though. This would be, like, the last company that I would think would come out with, like, a dating sim game. But, yeah. Thanks for watching, as always. If you want, please like and subscribe.